Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new video. So I hope you guys are really enjoying the videos at the moment. I'm really trying to post a lot more to the channel just to really get back on it. So before I start guys, if you wanna go ahead and download our how to edit like presets, we're giving you guys a free trial for, um, there's a huge sale going on at the moment. So you can get a free trial, download some free presets. Um, top link down below in the description. It includes all of our how to edit like presets, which um, are in our interpretation of lots of different artist styles like Dylan First and Anna Palander and stuff. Um, obviously our preset's not theirs, but um, go ahead and check the top mm -hmm. link down below in the description and if you wanna go ahead and download some um, free trial presets. Cool guys, so today we're gonna to be editing in the style um, of Dylan Thirsty. So this is his account here. We're doing another wildlife photo similar to this one here. A lot of guy, um, you guys were like requesting it all the time down below in the uh, comment section and I said I will go ahead and film another version. We filmed one before, it was hugely successful and popular and you guys got some insane results out of it so I thought we'd do the same thing again but with a slightly different um, style photo. So this is kind of what we're going to be basing off. Um, this is our photo here so subtly different, um, quite similar though and we'll be seeing you know, how close to the look we can get. So this is just using one of our presets that you can get in that top link down below in the description if you are interested so just like a one click. Um, application to the photo. So guys, before I dive straight into the editing, please check me out on Instagram. It's Matthew underscore GKB. Give me a follow, send me a DM, um, like my photos, save any photos, get any inspiration you want. Um, I'd love to connect with you guys over there. And the same for Sebastian as well. Um, Sebastian underscore JWP. Our links to our Instagram, to our Instagram are down below in the description. It'd be really cool to see you guys over there as well. So guys, let's just dive straight in. Don't hold you guys up anymore. So First thing, let's just reset this photo um, and get it back to what we had to start with. So first thing that I like to do is with these photos is I like to crop them to a four by five ratio ready for Instagram because that's primarily what we do on this channel is teach people how to edit in the style of Instagrammers. Um, so we need that four by five ready to post on Instagram. So let's just crop this and get it to a nice, um, a nice zoom. Ideally, if this photo had been taken with a slightly different composition, I think it would have got a slightly better result. But here is what we've got, so let's see what we can do with this. So let's start with the basics panel. So um, essentially the thing is that I like doing when I start editing in the style of different artists is analyzing their photos and seeing if I can replicate it. So the first thing is obviously we've got a lot of, lot of fade in the image, so we can achieve that with a tone curve, very crushed um, highlights, so there's no glaringly bright highlights apart from the dog's eyes, but we can use the selective brush tool to do things like that. Um, shadows are quite dark, the whole image is very moody um, and a bit blue. So his theme has gone more towards the blues, whereas a few years back, I don't know if I can go further back to be honest, um, he had more of these greens in his photos, so he's pushing more towards this um, this blue. So this is the photo I think we based off last time, so we're going to um, see his style ever so slightly changes for each photo, but um, the general gist is we want to be going for a bluey green tinge, very desaturated, very dark, very moody, um, kind of a little, not too much contrast, um, but we also want to be adding in some fade to the photo as well. Cool, so let's just dive straight in and see what we can do. So the first thing is, um, I like to just do a little bit with my um, white balance just to see if I can get it you know, a little bit better, um, closer to where um, I think it should be. So just you know, do that depending on what you think it should look like. Um, so the first thing, of course, is we just want to drop our exposure right the way down. Now we're going to go a little bit mad. We're going to drop it all the way down to about minus two and a half. Now at the moment it looks really dark, but um, there is a reason behind that because we will be brightening up the shadows um, and blacks a little, in a little bit as well, which means we'll just lose a bit of that contrast. So um, let's increase the contrast as well. Counterintuitive because we're going to be taking that back in a minute. Um, but essentially what I want to do is drop those highlights so we're getting this look here where he hasn't really got any very bright whites in his snow. Um, but we also want to have a lot more detail left in the image. So at the moment it's all very crushed. So we're going to bring up our shadows as well. So just bring those up to about plus 75, plus 80, just to help bring in a little bit more detail back into the shadows that we lost when we dropped the exposure. Now all I'm doing guys, I'm just essentially working step by step through um, and not copying but trying to get a very similar look to Dylan Thirsty's photos. Now I would encourage you guys to make your own style, uh, maybe something similar to Dylan Thirsty's stuff, but obviously don't go outright and copy him. Um, it's always cool for you guys to come up with your own stuff as well. So yeah, and I think we're getting, getting to the right kind of um, exposure settings. Now I'm also gonna bring down our whites as well. That's just to help bring the whitest parts of our like snow patches all the way down as well. 
um, and then I'm going to bring up our blanks. So what this is doing is just like crushing all the, so it's no longer like very bright, but it's also um, like made sure we still have some details left in the shadows and stuff. So let's just do a quick before and after. You can see how much difference that's made already to the photo. So the next thing I like to do is actually add a little bit of clarity into the photo. Now, the reason why I do that is because as we drop our contrast so much, the foreground, um, so Fox in this case, will start to blend into the background a bit more. So when you add in a bit of clarity, it just helps to separate it from the background a little bit, um, which I think helps a little bit more. Now, if you want to get a really accurate look to Dylan Firsty's photo and you're taking like a photo of a uh, dog like this or a wolf or whatever, or an arctic fox, it's always nice to use a small aperture, so, so maybe something like f4.5, 4.8, um, 2.6, something like that, you know, a small aperture size to get this blur in the background, which obviously we haven't really got in our photo so much. But um, we'll work with what we've got and see what we can do. So let's increase the clarity just a bit, just to separate the fox from the background a tiny bit. We're going to leave the dehaze as is, and then we're just going to desaturate and well, get rid of the vibrance. Um, a little bit on the image as well. So I'm just scrolling it down, not too much, I'm not going to go too mad, but essentially just to take out any of those colors. So already we're getting this desaturated moody look to the image. Now I will selectively go back and brighten up the, the fox's eyes and the white patches just because it needs to separate it from the background, but for the time being um, that is pretty much the look we're going for. So next up is a tone curve. Um, guys, if you want to learn more about editing in Lightroom, if you go ahead and grab our presets, you also get our Lightroom course for free, which is essentially going to teach you literally everything you need to know about Lightroom. So if you're so interested in learning more about Lightroom, that might be useful for you as well. Um, it's just totally up to you there, um, but the link's down below if you do want it. So what we're going to do here is try and add in the fade to the image that we were talking about earlier. So the way you do that is just bringing up the, the blacks here, or the shadows, um, and essentially making them more gray, which softens the image a little bit. Now we don't want to go too much um, that it just makes the image look a little bit weird and too flat. So to counteract that we're going to add in a little bit of contrast by bringing up our midtones here. Now as you can see with this kind of editing process it's really starting to make the image look a bit more like it was taken at night time, which is you know something that we um, also see in lots of his photos. None of them really look like they're taken during the day and bright sunny days because of the way he edits them. So that's a look we're kind of aiming towards which can really be achieved quite well through the tone curve. Now we're getting the moody look here and we're definitely getting the um, right amount of contrast and stuff um, that we think we need for the photo. So the next thing really is the HSL sliders where the image really starts to you know pop and come into play. So what I like to do when I'm editing in the style of Dylan Firsty is kind of just leave the colors as is and focus really on desaturating selectively colors and then brightening up certain areas of our luminance sliders and then finally coming down to our split tone to add this bluey green tinge to the entire image. Now the reason behind that is because all of his images are very desaturated, you've kind of just got blacks, whites and this bluey tinge and that's in pretty much every single one of his photos. Um, obviously this one's quite a, really quite a nice one, I love this photo but it's slightly different and does stand out from his um, theme a little bit more with this more bright blue and the dog you see has got it's still got its normal colors to it we don't want to completely take away those colors um, so let's see what we can do same with this one here you see this is the, probably the color of the dog um, so we don't want to go ahead and get rid of that too much so let's go over here and have a bit of a play around so first things first I'm gonna leave my red orange and yellows as they are because that will change the color of the dog I am however going to come up to my greens and brighten those up, see if I've got any, actually no, there's no point because I haven't got much green in the image, I was hoping to pull out any greens that I have, don't have any aquas, I'll probably have some blue where um, I'm not really going to do too much, if anything I'm going to drop it down towards the teal sign because that will help me get this bluey look, um, sorry green teal look, but um, you know as I said we'll be doing most of that in our uh, split turning in a minute. Now one thing I do want to do is um, really play around with my luminance sliders because that's going to help separate the dog from the background which we'll do or the fox from the background rather which we'll do in a minute. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm thinking about actually increasing the saturation of the orange a little bit and the luminance. Now that's slightly counterintuitive but essentially what that's going to help us do is really start to separate the fox from the background because as I said earlier um, you know we do want to make sure we can see it so um, if we took the saturation of the orange right the way down, it just blends it into the background even more. And sometimes it's nice to have this little bit 
more stark contrast between the oranges and the and the background which you know sometimes he has like I showed you in this where is it this photo here so you know these photo videos guys are much more like my interpretation of Dylan Thursday style so you see like this he's got a couple of colors really popping out which is the yellows of this eagle here which we're trying to do with our fox at the moment so let's just bump up that saturation quite high it looks really nice there now what should we do what about yellows as well let's put those up a little bit um, I'm just going to go through and pretty much drop the saturation of almost everything else. And you see there the blues. As soon as I dropped that, it really like desaturated. <coughs> excuse me, the entire image because the entire image is pretty much made up of like fundamentally made up of blues. That's because it's quite a cold environment. Um, now I think actually I've made something. I think it's the is it the blues because the part of the the dog there is looking quite desaturated. Um, hmm, it's a bit strange. Okay, um, just trying to work out because the uh, this back end of the dog here looks very, very desaturated. But I think that's just because when I saturate my orange, it looks completely different to um, when I've taken the vibrancy down of the entire image. So maybe we'll just bring one of these back up, see if we can bring a little bit more color to the image and maybe add in. Um, a little bit more orange to the image. Okay, I'm not really sure. That's probably because that part of the fox is actually quite grey. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Me being a bit of an idiot there, but um, the reason why I was getting a bit confused there, guys, if you are wondering, is because this back end of the fox here, when I was doing my adjustments, I couldn't really bring out any orange from it, and I wasn't sure why, but it's because it's actually um, a grey area of the fox. So me increasing the saturation of the oranges isn't going to make a blind bit of difference to that section of the fox. Okay, so let's just get back to where we were. I'm going to drop my saturation of my blues a small amount, but not too much. Um, and then I'm just going to bring my purples and magentas all the way down to zero as well. Now, what else can we do? Da, da, da. I'm actually going to, with my blues, see what happens when I um, have a play around with the luminance. Now, I actually quite like it bringing the luminance down a little bit. Um, that's up to you, though, You know, depending on your photo and, and seeing what works, really. Okay, so that's pretty much that done. The next bit, which is going to really make the image um, more like consistent and apply a whole color scheme to it, is the split turning. And that's where most of it comes in. Now, I'm going to play around with a couple of things here. So I like to hold down Alt and scroll along my slider. And I'm thinking for Dylan Firsty's photos, applying a bit of this ice blue into my highlights, which I can see here is around about 220. And then for my shadows, I am actually, let's go back to this picture of this dog that we were basing it off. Now, I did it earlier and I went for more of a blue, but I'm actually thinking this has got a tiny tinge of green to it as well. So let's try, uh, from experience, around 210, I think, might be a good color to go for. Um, so 200, I think something around there is a good similar approximation. So let's just scroll between them. Definitely getting closer. You know, come to think of it, that orange is a little bit too saturated, guys. You know, in the entirety of the editing phase, there's always minor tweaks and adjustments that you want to go back and do. And actually, while I'm here and I'm remem remembering it, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these bits of what look like toast or something, which they've obviously used to um, make sure the dog or the fox kind of comes. Um, let's try to work out why that's not blending super well. That's fine, let's bring that down to a similar level. Okay, that's cool. And then let's just remove that bit of toast as well. You know, anything that's just really distracting from our main image is just something that we kind of just want to get rid of, really, because it's there's not really much point keeping it in there. It's not adding much. It's just kind of annoying me and taking it away from the image. Okay, so that was a bit of a sidetrack there, guys. Let's get back to applying our split toning. So, you know, we can go through and adjust our... Um, you know, saturations of each one. But I think I don't want to be making it too oversaturated. And um, what I am going to do is come back and bring up those highlights just a tiny bit because I've taken back so much that we haven't really got much contrast left in the image, which I think is kind of ruining it a little bit. Um, let's have a play around with our. Um, no, let's put those temperature sliders back. Okay, so that is almost it all done, guys. We're getting there. Now, one thing I do like to do to try and make. Um, 
bit more accurate to Dylan Thirsty's photos is all of his photos look very smooth and clean. Now there's two reasons why they look so soft. One reason is because of the blur of the background. Well, there's three reasons. Two is because he's put a fade over the whole thing, which kind of just puts this matte look to the whole thing. It looks very matte and not very shiny. Um, and the third one is a tr like kind of trick, a cheat, I guess, that we can use um, by adding in some noise reduction. Now what this does is essentially just smooths out any high patches or grainy bits in the image. Now that's probably a little bit too much, but essentially it just softens the entire image. And you can see there, it just kind of makes it look a little bit more plasticky, is how I like to describe it, um, and just softens pretty much the entire image. Okay, so final thing that I like to do is have a bit of a play around with my camera calibration, just because I can, and sometimes it makes quite a lot of difference to the image. So let's try and bring my reds down, greens up, and then maybe blues up as well see what that does to the image okay I really like that effect it's kind of just I can't really describe super well the camera calibrations all it does is essentially just correct for white balance and stuff that you can use it for like theoretically that's what you probably should use it for but it also just helps to um, apply a more uniform look to the to the entire image that you can't necessarily achieve with your HSL sliders um, so that's one of the main reasons why I like to use it. Okay, so let's just call it a day with that. Let's just do a quick before and after so you can see the difference that we've made so far and compare it with our reference image. So there's a few things I'd like to point out. First thing is the blue that I've applied to it is ever so slightly subtly different to firsties. One thing that I'm going to do is increase my saturation of my highlights, which is more of an icy blue, um, and take that up to the left a little bit maybe just because I think that's partly why it looks slightly different. Um, and then make this maybe a tiny bit more blue and then we're getting a little bit closer to the look we're looking for there. Um, second thing is the luminance of the sky. I'm actually going to take that back up again because we are trying to make it look more similar to Dylan Firsties and the sky in his is a little bit lighter than ours so um, let's bring that back up again um, and because we've done that our brightness of our snows come up and when we increase our highlights to do that I'm going to bring those down a little bit and maybe just touch up the whites a little bit just to separate the fox a little bit more from the background. Um, okay, so let's just um, keep doing some minor tweaks and seeing where we can get. Okay, I, you know, I think for this photo, guys, it works a little bit better when I have my lumens of my sky, of my blue, a little bit darker. So we're going to roll with that, even though it isn't necessarily identical to Dylan Firsties. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to have this really cool effect to the eyes. We're going to brush this in, and we're going to try and separate the dog like he's done from his background. So a really simple trick to doing that, guys, is getting your brush tool here, um, creating a ooh, create a new brush, um, and then what I like to do is essentially make a new one, dun, dun, dun. and I want to make sure my exposure is essentially on my clarity is up. So let's just brush it over the dog's face here or the fox's face to see if we can separate him from the background a little bit more. So you can see the the difference this is making. It's really just kind of separating him from the background and making him stand out a little bit more which just makes it you know a little bit easier to see him cool so let's try turning it off and on so you can see the difference and on you can see how much we can now um, separate him from the background cool let's press command Z right so let's just try and increase the exposure a little bit there just to Brighten him up, get the clarity slider, bring that up, and grab our highlights, brighten these sections up, and actually try and brighten up our shadows a little bit as well. Bring those up and the blacks. Whoa, maybe not that. Let's not let's not do that. Let's just leave the blacks. Okay, now what I'm doing is just essentially just any bits that I brushed you know, onto the snow that are now brightening up those of the snow, I'm just removing because we don't want that. Okay, I'm going to make a new brush now, and I'm going to zoom in on the uh, fox's eyes, because what we're doing now is we want to get that really cool look to the fox's face, um, where we make his eyes really stand out. So, really easy way to do that, to create a new brush, reset everything, drag your exposure right the way up. Um, sometimes it works better if you do your highlights, so let's try highlights first. Drag my highlights really up, and grab my clarity up. Now, I'm going to make my brush slightly smaller, and essentially just brush this over the eye region. Um, make sure your density is high enough. Yeah, that's fine. Density and flow is high enough, so it's actually doing something to the dog, 
or the fox. Okay, so that didn't really work too much, so we're now going to just try and bump up the exposure a little bit. Um, obviously, we don't want to make it look like some demon dog, but um, we do want those to be standing out a little bit. So if we just you know, delete that and press Command Z, we can see the difference it makes to the image. Um, let's also bring up the whites of that as well. Dun, dun, dun. And the clarity. Okay, let's zoom back out so it looks like. I hope it doesn't look too demonic. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. We can actually start seeing the dog's eyes a little bit, just like we can here um, in Dylan Percy's photo. Um, I really think we can get away with adding in a little bit more exposure there. But you see, if we go too high, he does look a little bit crazy, like some kind of weird cyborg dog. So we're going to just leave it around that so it doesn't look too unnatural. Okay, there we go, guys. I think I'm going to leave it at that. You know, I'm just going to make... Yeah, I'm, th I'm yeah, I'm gonna leave that. I don't want to overwork it. One thing I was thinking of doing just then was just taking another brush and just brightening up a little of these white patches of the dog, um, and seeing if that could do anything. One final thing I'm gonna do is just make sure our attention is focused towards the dog. Is get our graduated filter tool, decrease clarity and everything. Just drop our exposure, and just bring in from the bottom left here um, a darker section that essentially just focuses our eye towards um, the dog. Yeah, let's just remove that one, we don't want that. See what it looks like from the top right as well. No, that's okay. Okay, so there we go guys, that's pretty much the end of the video. I hope you have learned something or enjoyed something from this video. Let's just do a quick before and after, before and after, and just quickly put that into full screen um, so you guys can see the final edit. So, you know, it's not exactly identical to Dylan Firsty, but it's definitely um, on the route to being, you know, as similar as it can pretty much get. So I hope you guys have learned something from this video. If you have, please let us know down below in the comments. And of course, guys, if you want to go ahead and grab those presets, you know where the link is down below in the description. It would really help to support the channel. So thank you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video.